Jersey. Um, his name is Brother Javed Siddiqui. Uh, many of us should already be very familiar with him, um, especially in the audience, inshallah. He has been um, very involved um, in uh, you know, Islamic movement work, um, particularly with ICNA, um, Islamic Circle of North America. He was the Amir, the president um, of ICNA for four years, um, not too long ago. And after that, he and during that time, even he was able to transition to helping hand for relief and development, where he currently sits as the CEO. Um, and at a time like this, when international support is needed more than ever, um, it's very uh, prudent, high time to be having him discuss with us, inshallah, the other uh, the etiquette of helping others, right? Being part of an organization that is for over a decade. Uh, more than that now, has been dedicated to this effort. Um, inshallah, he's more than qualified to speak to us about this. Um, and inshallah, uh, without further ado, um, we'll give it to Brother Jabba Siddiqui. Uh, as, uh, as was mentioned, if anybody in the online audience has any questions that come up, please put it on the WhatsApp um, as we go, inshallah, or towards the end. Bring up all those questions so everybody is able to receive um, those answers. So Jazakallah Khair, I'll hand it off to Jabba Siddiqui. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Jazakum Allah Khair, I'm really honored to be really part of this class. Uh, Marana Yusuf Islahi, uh, I mean, his name brings a lot of great memories for all of us. And when Brother Farhan, Brother Obeid uh, reached out to me about this class, I really don't find myself, uh, you know, capable of covering uh, a personality and his work and some of the areas that he is focused on. But uh, uh, because of his contributions and what he has been uh, for, for the Muslim community around the world, I think I really felt uh, it was an honor for me to, to be here and to present uh, his famous book, this Adab is Zindagi. So let me start off with, uh, uh, you know, and as I was, alaikum as salam, as I started looking at, uh, you know, uh, googling some uh, some some slides and some 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 topics and looking at it, and I realized this this book has been printed in so many different forms. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So I want to start off with th this question, and the the answer was given in the previous session. Uh, why do you think this book? was received and was uh, really adopted and read by millions of people around the world. And from translations perspective, obviously the book was originally written in Urdu, but there are English translations as well. What, what do you think? And again, I want this really, this session to be very interactive uh, because again, it's, a, it's the group dynamics and group wisdom is what really makes these classes and these topics uh, make it very easy for you to understand what's going on. So anyone wants to share uh, why this book has received this level of acceptance uh, and this level of uh, uh, popularity? Uh, anyone online? Yes, sister. Um, after Shaykh passed, I heard his son saying that um, he asked his father, Shaykh Islam, if he had the same question. And he said that, before I published it, I actually lived the content of the book. Absolutely, absolutely. The sister has uh, uh, shared the answer that uh, his son asked him the same question. And his answer was that before publishing this book, uh, Manali Shostahi himself said, I tried my best to exercise everything I wrote in this book. Brothers and sisters, what does that tell you? What does that tell you from a spiritual perspective? This angle is, is something that we need to think about. So if I'm here trying to teach something or preach something, I'm on the member, I'm a parent, 
trying to tell my children something. What does that tell us as, as a community, as believers, as Muslims? What is that one thing that comes to mind? When, when I see this and when I uh, really, I want people to follow something. Yes, brother. I want to see you walking the walk. Walking the walk, right? Walking the talk, basically, right? Uh, and this is what was very special about our leaders and our imma and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At the end of the day, people had no hesitation. And the people in Mecca were, were stunned. They basically, they didn't know how to object to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was the As-Sadiq Al-Ameen. I mean, how, how do you defy that sort of a, a strong understanding, right? And, and uh, by the way, to keep me honest, if there are online uh, responses, please let me know, inshallah. So <clears throat> I want to uh, start off here. Uh, SubhanAllah, this is not the one with the transitions. <laughs> okay, it's, never mind, we'll just move on. So when you look at helping people, uh, in Surah Al-Insan, a very famous ayat. And by the way, if you go to the Helping Hand website, you will see this, and it will say, this is the inspiration. So, the root of, and the root cause, and the basic reason why I want to help any one of my brothers and sisters around the world, uh, in my community, at home, in my relatives. What would you say? Um, I think this is going to be, I wonder if there's a way for me to, uh, let me just give me one second, let me start, because there are transitions that I'm trying to use here. Um, and without them, the question would become, uh, if the whole slide shows up, and. One fell so it's gonna just make it difficult. Give me one second, please. Let me stop the the, the... one second. So, can you see the screen? Okay, good. So the question is, what is the root of this help? If I'm trying to help someone, what are the basic factors that are really driving my help? So as I list on the, on the right-hand side here, recognition and fame, uh, what we call a transactional approach. If you help me, I will help you. Those are some common scenarios. There's a hidden agenda behind it. I feel good. You know, that's one of the things which you, you will hear a lot of uh, humanitarians talk about, right? They will say, I feel good. And that is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, literally put in this, in, this, in this action of helping others. Dopamine goes on and you are really feeling that a uh, rush of dopamine, and then that makes you want to help people. Um, people say it's the right thing to do, right? Uh, I'm a human. I want to be a humanitarian, and so on and so forth. So what is the what is wrong with this picture? 
What is wrong with this picture? Anyone wants to help answer the question? What is wrong with all these scenarios where people say, we help others because of this? Anyone wants to share their thoughts on what's wrong with that from a perspective of a Muslim? Yes, thank you very much, right? It comes down to it. I think uh, as a believer and as a Muslim, my goal is not, and the ayah, and the second part of the ayah actually answers the question. So in this slide, you already got the answer because my transitions were not working. So in the next one, we'll, we'll be more, uh, inshallah, careful. So, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ Anytime, brothers and sisters, I think our goal should be very clearly, why am I doing this? I don't need La nuridu minkum jaza'an wala shukura. So when I start off with that premise, when I start off with the perspective, and that has to be created within us. We, this is not going to be uh, something by design because as a human being, I leave my house with one intention and by the time I get to the middle of the road, I have another intention. By the time I enter the building, I have a third intention. And when I get into the classroom, I have a fourth intention. The intention continues to change constantly and you have to remind yourself consciously you are going to intentionally, you are going to say to yourself, I'm here to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rida ar-rab, right? The, the pleasure of Allah is the main goal and it doesn't matter. And that's where, that's why the results don't matter. Entire Muslim community right now is in a huge pain going through and what they, and they're seeing what they're seeing right now in Palestine. Everyone is trying different things. Someone can try something very small. Someone may be only able to do dua. They, don't, they are physically incapable. They don't have the wealth. But they're sincere dua. Because really, at the end of the day, their intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I help, if I send a check, or if I send supplies, and an, an organization, like Helping Hand, for instance, right now. Helping Hand is trying a lot of different things. And many a times, brothers and sisters, organization becomes the goal. The organization so I want Helping Hand to become famous. I want Helping Hand to be the name around the country for the Muslim community. I want Helping Hand. I want Helping Hand. The organization becomes the goal. That's the danger in these, in these areas. And that's where you have to be very, very clear-minded. And you have to remind yourself constantly that I am only doing this. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in the first ayah, can somebody point me if, if you have any uh, understanding of the Arabic language, can you point out to the same thing, to the same angle in the first ayah? In the first, in the first, can you point to something in the first ayah that expresses the same thing. Oh. Oh, somebody said the answer. I, I heard somebody say something. Hubbihi. Oh. Hubbihi, right? We are feeding you for his pleasure, for his love, for the pleasure of Allah. So, it's embedded. If we look at these ayat, the, the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are so powerful. Ala hubbihi. For the sake of Allah. That's embedded in that ayat. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, now, interestingly enough, there are other areas. In Quran, there are very interesting when it comes to helping others and our faith. 
So this is the first part of the ayah. Can someone help me with which surah is this? We'll try to do that whenever, as we go. Surah Al-Layl. So a sister responds here, Surah Al-Layl. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what is the meaning of this ayah? Right? And then this, this is the second ayah. We just went through this ayah. Anyone remembers which surah was this? Al-Insan. So you're paying attention. That's great. <laughs> I'm glad. Right? Surah Al-Insan. And, and this last part. إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَمِ It's a tricky question. Anyway, so it's okay. Uh, it's, it's really hard. Sometimes really, really even hard for everyone uh, who even memorizes this. It's Surah al -Layl. Actually, this is the last part of Surah al right? So now look at the sequence here. So if we look at the translation here, for amma man a'ta wa taqa, except those who give and they are charitable and are mindful of Allah. And in the next ayah, look at the sequence. And they feed for the sake of Allah, the miskin and the yatim and the asir. And this is the purpose. And then what it says, And what is the meaning here? We fear from our Lord a day that shall be long and distressful. Okay. Look at these two ayat. Tell me what you see. Tell me a specific sequence. Okay. What are the two conditions from a belief perspective? And it's very interesting how the sequence is also. Those two things. Can someone spot the sequence? In the, if you look at the first ayat. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى what the car? What do you see? Anyone? Yes. First part is about giving, the second is being mindful of Allah. Yes, yes. Very, very, you're really getting to the answer, right? So the sequence here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not talk about. So when you give, when you give, that sort of helps you bring that concept of taqwa. So he did not say one more. And even in the second one, the, the discussion was about they give first, and that creates in them. The taqwa, the fear, the mindfulness comes next. You following me? Right? That giving, a'ta wa taqa. It did not say, fa'amma man taqa wa a'ta. That would have been the, the, the logical thought process. I, I fear Allah and therefore I give. No. But that giving will instill in you when you are when you try to move in that direction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help you become more mindful of him. When you remind yourself that you're doing something for the sake of Allah, that will create a level of taqwa in you. It's a very interesting perspective, right? If you think about the ayah deeply. So that sincerity, that motivation sort of gives rise to the taqwa, which is eventually, when we go to the next slide. So, as I said, the believer should help others for the sake of Allah and for the pleasure of Allah. Okay. And I think uh, that the slide will come later on. <clears throat> Let me talk about this true story, by the way. Uh, we have a pretty big Libyan community in the city I live in. Um, and I was talking to one of the brothers, and he told me the story, which I always loved it from a from a case study perspective. 
He said uh, in Libya, we had a, uh, um, he said one of his friends told him the story uh, because he experienced it himself. He said this friend of his was working for a company with dealt with tires. And one time they decided to uh, place a, re a really huge order, like a several million, million dollars. It was a pretty big order. So this gentleman, this friend of his, went to the marketplace where there were about 24, 25 shops in that area. And he looked around. Uh, these were all just, you know, medium-sized shops. And he saw one shopkeeper. He seemed like an older gentleman, uh, a smaller shop. And he's like, okay, I'm going to place an order. Uh, let me see if I can help somebody, right? I can just... So he walks up to the shop to that shopkeeper, and he says to him, uh, uh, uncle, I, I want to place an order. Uh, can we go out for lunch, for example? Can we, I just want to talk to you about the order. And they go out for lunch, and he explains the situation. He says, I want to uh, place this huge order. And this was an order that almost for that person or for that shop, it would have taken care of for the rest of his life. Basically, it would have just been enough for him to go home and close his shop and be, be comfortable. To his surprise, the shopkeeper said, no, I will not place this order. He said, what are you talking about? You, it's a multi-million dollar deal. And it's just, I mean, he was like flabbergasted. And he says, no. He says, so why? He says, what about the other 24 shops? They will have nothing from this deal. And this is the true story. He said, the only way I'm going to place and accept your order is if we all, 25 of us, will accept this, this order and we will deliver it together to you. Okay. And that's what happened. They went back. The point I'm trying to stress upon here is what do you, what do you, if you hear this story, and I want everyone to participate, if, you, if possible, inshallah, what do you think is going on here, right? What, what are some of the lessons learned? This man comes in to help, and he wants to help someone in a big way. But this is the type of response. And I'm mentioning this because it, it really stuck with me and stayed with me forever because... Every time I think about it, there's so many things that we can learn from this. Let's start. Let's see. Who who wants to go first? What do you think was going on here? He wants to share the profit. He wants to share the profit, right? He wants to share the profit. What else? Anyone from online? I mean, please, uh, online brothers and sisters, uh, feel free. If, uh, and I think... Uh, uh, Danielle is going to help us out, inshallah. So if you, somebody raises their hand, let me know. Anyone from the online team, uh, also, you're welcome to give your answer or write in the chat box. For all the 24 businessmen families also. Why? Indirectly, we want to speak that everybody should grow together. Everyone grows together. So what does that do? What does that do when you when everyone grows together? Stronger community. Hmm? Stronger community. Yeah. A stronger community. A stronger community. What else happens? Yes, sister. Of love and brotherhood. There is an angle of love and brotherhood, right? Is it a true angle of love and brotherhood? Start to think about yes. Hmm. Good deeds for like all the food, I guess, that people would eat off of the. Essentially, the, the, the baraka and the blessing of all the entire act will go a long way. Let me just remind you think about what if he's done the deal? What would have happened? If he said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do the order for you, right? And, and he just took, took that order and went with it. What would have happened? What would have happened in that in that marketplace? 
Yes. Jealousy. 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 Right? That jealousy would have, you know, no one would have said anything because at the end of the day, it's okay, right? It's, uh, it's uh, I mean, that's how the world operates these days. But people would have left me with, with that jealousy. And would people look at him the same way next time he comes to the, that older gentleman comes to his shop or does his business? So there are, there's a lot of dynamics that are just going on in this situation, right? Yes. In practicing the previous slide that you had, Abhata is like, like gifts, right? Yes. It's not, uh, you know, always just giving in that sense, but he's actually giving and gifting this. So he's he, actually in that realm also. In that realm, because this was a gift from him. To the rest of the rest of the uh, businessmen, right? It was a gift from him because he didn't have to give that gift. He could have just kept the whole gift to, or the whole business to himself. But the portion that he took one twenty fifth of that, but he gave all the rest of it, the twenty four pieces parts to to that to that income. He gave it as a gift to the others, right? Actually, we see this a lot of business communities. I mean. Or Karachi, and they will be looking for some clothes. This store doesn't have it. They go next door, they get it from there. And, and but actually, when we, because we don't apply that in our world, like you know, daily um, practices. Absolutely. So Farhan Bhai brings up a very important point. He said, and we have seen this in, 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 in I, I remember in Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, uh, both places. And they, if the shopkeeper doesn't have that, oh, the shop two downs, two, uh, you know, shops down, he has that. And he would go go out there and get it from him, and you pay him. Basically, he doesn't get any profit. He actually gets he does this business for someone else, just because he didn't have it. So he, he's asked someone else. But he he would not he would not say, oh no no no, don't do that. I'm just going to get it for you, and you come back tomorrow, and I'll have it for you. No, because he could have gone to the other shop, and got it for a cheaper price and sell it on a higher price, and basically keeps his his profit. So. There's a lot of dynamics going on here, right? You wish for your... Yes, yes, please. This, this gentleman probably deeply understood that this one act of kindness could have taken him to Jannah. So this is taqwa. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, right? So he internalized this concept and understood that this one act of kindness can really take him to Jannah, as the brother is saying. So think about all the different manifestations of this simple act. It seems simple, but it just has such a long, uh, you know, far ramifications. Uh, wish for your brother for which, what, we, what you wish for yourself, right? It's the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When wealth is distributed, it helps everyone. That's the basic idea, you know, because it's really by... by this was a huge help for all the families, and it was not the 24 shops there. If you just did the average math of five people per family, that was probably more than 100 people that would have benefited from that act. Single act, but everyone and their families benefited. And that, that story would have gone around into the community. And a good act would continue to bring more benefits because then now the families see each other in a in a in a in a positive light, and they start to respect and love each other. Right. So <clears throat> we talked about the sharing of resources, right? And speaking of sharing of resources, look at this ayah. Look at this ayah of Quran and see how it uh, what it what it says. الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا خلق Lakum. He has created for you ma fil ardi jami'an. Whatever is in the heavens, whatever is on the earth. And many scholars point to this ayah and similar ayat about the part of sharing. And this world is a resource that needs to be shared. This world is a resource that needs to be. Now think about what is going on when it comes to the resources on the earth and how the world is moving in a direction of, I want to occupy resources. I want to, geopolitical tensions everywhere in the world, 
That is the real essence behind them. There are people, powerful people are trying to control resources. And in, in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you even had access to the kingdom of the, of the earth, if, if the heavens of, or the treasures of this earth would have been under your disposal, you would have been cheap. And when it comes to helping, if I had everything, all the wealth of this world, I would have been cheap. We look at it today. We were just talking on the way up here, me and Farhan Bhai. How much money people need? How many homes can you live in? How many cars can you drive at the same time? You know, how much how much property can you enjoy at, at, at in one given moment? But we see that when it comes to uh, the Prophet famously have said, if Bani Adam has a, a value of gold, he wants another one. And if you have two, he has he wants to have a third one. So subhanallah. So uh, if if you look look at our religion and how what it teaches us when it comes to uh, helping others, and what is the final point? One of the most important points is reliance on Allah. Reliance on Allah, tawakkul on Allah. That at the end of the day, uh, <clears throat> what is that small surah in Quran that refers to this whole concept? If you can, anyone help me. I would like to have really the online people. Uh, in the 30th, just there's a small surah that we, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses about those who are collecting money and continuously counting it and counting it and counting it. Anyone remembers? Wailun likulli humazatin lumaza. Aladi jama amalan wa addada. Right? He, he, he collects it and he counts it and he collects. Yahsabu anna ma lahu akhlada. Why is he doing this? He thinks this wealth is going to make him. Uh, immortal, right? Immortal, right? And that, mortal is the one you die. Right? Immortal, right? Be, be, because of the, what is what, this is the human psychology? Wealth sort of makes you feel like I have power, and it's true. It's true. It's, it's nothing wrong with that. But the at the end of the day, are you truly dependent on this wealth? Is this wealth is going to make him immortal and he's going to live forever and he doesn't need anyone else. Look at the jabbarin of the earth. Look at the, the transgressors and look at these, uh, you know, these powerful people. They think and they cling to this wealth in a way that this is the thing, this is what's going to sustain them. Right? Uh, <clears throat> So, um, you know, speaking of that emotion, I think the sister has responded that uh, very correctly. Uh, if, if we look at this here. Now, I, I want to bring about these ayat and see if someone can see another element, another element of the same story. When you're helping someone, what was, I think somebody referred to it, and if, see if someone can actually, so the first one, وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And be at the top of your game, do ihsan, because Allah loves those who are muhsineen. Now when it comes to ihsan, do you think, uh, if, you ask this, if I ask this question, would it have been a sin or wrong if the old businessman were to accept the deal? No, right? In today's world, that would have been okay, right? Um, so the behavior that was at play, and I think we, we, we were answering that question, all of us together, is, I would say, anyone wants to guess? What is it? Ihsan, right? Thank you. Ihsan is at play. It's above and beyond what is expected of you. He didn't have to do it. It was not a sin. It would have been okay. But he was engaged in ihsan. 
right? And this person must have probably understood this concept very well. In Allah yuhibbul muhsinin, right? Um, uh, <clears throat> here's uh, another interesting question. Uh, someone who have done that, would he do this? Right? No. Absolutely. We don't. We don't think. I mean, this is just obviously we don't know the the, the true nature of this. But he he probably didn't do, didn't do this, right? Uh, why? Hmm. Right. Can somebody, anyone, can give me a reference to that in, in, from Quran and Sunnah and says, we've been told, or at least paraphrase the, the meaning of, the, of that, uh, that, that message? Hmm? So, so that surah is also, you can, you, can, you can take that as a reference there, right? There's another, there's another ayah in Quran which talks specifically about sadaqatun yatba'uha adha. A sadaqa, a ihsan, uh, something that is good as what done, followed by man and adha, right? The, the words I use in Quran are called man and adha. You go back to the, to, to the person you've done some good to and you say, well, you know, uh, Remember when I did this to you? Remember that? Whatever, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discourages us completely from that. Yes, please. Someone from online said uh, it would not earn Allah's pleasure to talk about you. It will not learn, uh, earn Allah's pleasure. Thank you. I think the online uh, brother or sister has pointed out it will not earn Allah's pleasure. And it goes directly back to, because what is the intention behind helping others? We have to internalize that, that thought process. Why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Right? And if that, of, of that reminder of the, the good deed, and we have a lot of scenarios, right? We have always, we pierce in situations, everyone, you know, um, do me a favor, do me a favor. And once you start thinking about this, uh, <clears throat> uh, so you kind of already talked about the, the impact on the community. Uh, it has really brought, so at the end of the day, I would say this old businessman genuinely loved his community and he wanted to create a cooperative and a strong community and wanted to have perfection to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let me pause here for a moment. I want you to share somebody's experience or someone, your family's experience or your friend's experience. Have you experienced this before? Something like this before? In your own dealings with people uh, or if you don't want to mention that you're, you are the, the one who are doing it, you can mention it with someone else's name, right? Somebody was doing this. And, 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 and have you really seen the impact of this on that sort of help? What did, what did that really create? What sort of an environment it really created? What kind of a relationship it has created between you and that person or the person who was helping and the person who received the help? Um, can anyone share anything, any story, any example, anything? And our online team can, inshallah, they can maybe share any, any thoughts. And I'm, I'm trying to just drive this message home that when I'm trying to help someone, a group of people, and we are now in this scenario, this process of helping our brothers and sisters in Gaza, right? And we get this donor fatigue all the time. It was Afghanistan the week before. It was Libya the week before that. 
It was Marrakesh the week before that. It was Syria the week before that. It was Turkey the week before that. You continue, and, and people may start to think about this and say, wait a second, you know, how much can I give? How much can I give? And people may start thinking, I'm doing this favor to Allah, na'udhu billah, or someone else. All these people. I've given enough. Right? Those things start to creep in into your mind. Okay? And it happens. People, people do feel that way sometimes. And let me just ask you this one simple question. Would you want to be in their situation? No. No. You would never want to be in their situation, right? And think about it this way. This wealth that you've been given, you are a custodian of that wealth. You are a trustee of that wealth. You don't own it. It's not yours. Someone gave this wealth to you. You, you were not born with it. Right? Someone gave it to you, and you are, you are the custodian of that. You are the trustee of that. It doesn't belong to you. And he can take it back any time. And he says, spend this here, here, and can you give me back a loan from that wealth, right? So we, we understand the whole the bigger picture. But when you really ground yourself in this, in this thought process, you start to think differently. You don't start to feel like you're doing somebody a favor. You are really, there's, there's no concept of men Right, something you go back to this, these these people and say, you know, we we helped you over in uh, during the month of uh, you know February. We did this this for you. That just disappears from your memory. So it's very important to understand these concepts. Now, take a look at this picture. Okay, what do you think is going on? Anyone? Any thoughts? Yes. Hmm. Looks as if you might be afraid of the having clearly suffered some kind of disaster based on the rubble and the Yep. Yep. So definitely the sister has suffered uh, due to this disaster. Now the person on the left side, who seems to be from helping hand in this case, uh, if he starts to think about this situation like, yeah, I'm helping, right? I'm helping. I'm better than these people. Oh, I have the upper hand. He's looking at that and she is, she seems like she's thanking him. She's making dua for him, right? Some, some sort of response. May Allah reward you. What is that? What is that? What, what can that do to you, somebody's heart? I'm, that could create, you are there to help somebody. But in the process, you feel like, and again, this applies to all of our humanitarian organizations. Helping Hand is one of them. We could show up there and we feel like, uh, oh, you know, poor people, you know, feel bad for them. As if I am not susceptible to the same thing, right? As if I was someone special and these things would not happen to me. I'm kind of somewhere above, above uh, the situation. Yes. Yeah, that's very part of the religion. So, and the time, if you think people want to arrive, he 
can be able to help this community. You can be a bad Yes, Zakalakha. Very good point. Very good point. Yes. Yeah. Two thoughts. One from the last slide, actually, about the concept of a community um, where everyone's receiving and everyone's giving. You don't own it. Um, one of my classes, uh, at, I take my master's in philanthropy at Indiana University. One of the concepts we talked a lot about was a God, and the concept of a God, and the way I had always understood it growing up is it's just 2.5 percent of what, or whatever the percentage is of the money that you have to give, um, and then you can pick whichever organization you give it to. But that's how it's understood, perhaps in today's times where we don't have a society that's supporting that, at least not in uh, America, probably anywhere right now. Um, but if zakat is applied in an Islamic society. What it does is it reinforces the point you made about that wealth actually isn't yours. Um, you're the custodian of that wealth. You give from it because that's the expectation. And you could very easily be on the other side of it tomorrow and you're going to be receiving the wealth. So the wealth is consistently moving around within society because that's what it's meant to do. The wealth is not individualized like our society makes it where it's capitalistic it's how much iron it's how much you know goes to meat. so just to reinforce your point and then for the picture um you know i mean my family's been <clears throat> involved with this work a lot so i asked a lot of questions from them um and also we had the event shape of our i used to ask them this question too um the truth is Allah Subhanahu wa tells us many times in the quran and otherwise as well that he is with the orphan and he is supporting these people and Allah will give victory to those who are oppressed and all these different things. So the point is Allah will do this anyway, um, regardless of if the person in that um, jacket is there or not, it will happen to somebody else. So our fear sometimes should also be, and I wouldn't say fear, but our, our thought process should also be that will I be one of the means which Allah chose, chooses to make it happen. So I think that also helps put you in the right mindset that you're not doing this as a, as a favor, you are getting the favor by being allowed to be. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this is the crux of the conversation, right? Is I'm honored to be part of this process. The fact that I am, Allah has chosen me, uh, and made me a conduit for this kind of help. This is this is an honor for me, and not an obligation. It was not something that I did for somebody. No, it was it was I was lucky to be part of this process, to be part of this organization, to be part of this help, whatever that may be. But creating that sense and understanding the value, for example, we uh, Daniel was giving the example of zakat. And how that brings about, it's about help, right? How it brings about everyone. It, it brings everyone up. It's meant to bring everyone up. See, and it does it in ways that are not so difficult for the community. I mean, asking somebody for 2.5% of their wealth, even though if you are a yes, you're a billionaire, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be a millions of dollars. But, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, everyone is going to benefit. So that help that you have given, that was not an uh, in, in the Urdu term, like we call it, right? That's not the intention there, right? Uh, it was not man, as we call it in Arabic, for example. It was, that, that wasn't it. So, so you have to ground yourself when it comes to that. Um, and then I, I want to, uh, how we, Go back. Um, um we it says, it says I think the screen is uh, let me see if I can it shows on zoom, it's not showing up here, right? Oh it's showing there. 
Online is fine. Interesting. Uh, let me log off and log back in, maybe. Yeah, I think. Uh, Okay. Display. I just logged off completely. Uh, that's okay. I can what do you Okay. Is it okay now? Okay. So hopefully we'll keep it stay like that. So now let's transition to this following conversation. And this is how Allah, the Prophet would, would, would make it, right? There are several categories here talked, talked about in terms of helping others. He starts off with مَنَّفَسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا Very famous hadith. Everyone has, has read it, right? Uh, and the translation is right here. So, again, there's so many scenarios where I would remove a difficulty from my brother or sister, right? Uh, that's one category. And Allah would... The... the, the uh, the call here is, if you do that, let me ask the question, the very basic question. What, what do you think that kurba could be? This kurba or difficulty, what, 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 is, what is that could be, potentially? Someone? Someone? Turning back. Turning back. health issues, uh, you know, family issues, and you can be there. And for example, if it was somebody just needed maybe a thousand dollars as loan or as help. Now, if you have reached out to that person and provided that thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or ten thousand dollars, it doesn't matter the amount. This is a kurba of this world. Nafas Allahu anhu kurbata min kurabi yawm al Now, there's so many narrations about yawm al qiyamah. If you think about the length in some, according to some ahadith, it could have been, it can be as long as 50,000 years. People wandering off. You know, we talk about no money and, uh, and no power and people wandering for that long. We only live in this world for a hundred years, plus minus, right? And if you, are, if you are going to exchange anything, if you just only think about the exchange rate, there is no exchange rate here. There's literally no exchange rate. If I was going to, if someone, may Allah protect anyone, may, if someone is going to be walking on that day, for 50,000 years with no shoes. And he would get shoes because of that. 
due to those thousand dollars that he gave here. Just imagine the simplest case scenario, or water, or shade, or food, whatever that may be. If you just do the translation, you will start to see this, the, the, the significance of this hadith. And again, it's the same in the same veins, in the same uh, description here. And if somebody, if you made, there was a difficulty, say, you know, they, they see somebody's in difficulty and you, you've helped them out. Yes, sallallahu alayhi wa dunya wa akhira. Woman satara muslim. Now, this word satara is very interesting. And something that doesn't really take a whole lot. So satara means to cover. <laughs> When satara uh, musliman, satarahu Allah fi dunya wal akhirah. And and again, look at this. Uh, the response is not just in akhirah only. In the first one, uh, in the second one, وَمَنْ يَسْرَ عَلَى مُعْسِرًا يَسْرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Allah will make things easy for him in this world and in the hereafter. So not only that he will receive the reward in this world. So he will receive it in the, in the hereafter as well, but he will also receive it in this dunya as well. Now, that's the bargain, if you think about that. And then the whole concept of satr. Who, who, who can tell me what is what would be included in satr? Woman satr a So the literal meaning, satr, right? It, it would just cover. That means you can even say if you provided clothes. So, you know, we do uh, clothing drives. And you send for your brothers and sisters, you know, clothes to Syria, to Afghanistan, to whatever. That's one one part of it. What what else can it come in satr? Anyone, uh, even our online team, if you want to share satr, what is what is the what else is covered in satr? Covering weakness. Uh, hmm? Covering personal weakness. Covering personal weakness. Thank you. Yes, yes. You you've learned something about somebody. And all you have to do is just hold yourself from sharing that information publicly. You really didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to provide anything. That urge to become, uh, you know, have you heard about this person? Oh my God, did you see this? Oh my God, did you, did you learn about this? Oh my God. That mom momentary pleasure of Gossiping, all you had to do, you had to curtail that urge to say that in front of people. Something very small. It didn't, you didn't have to spend any money. You didn't have, even that is satarahu Allahu fi dunya wal akhir. And then the last part of the hadith. And this is, this is why this hadith is so important to understand, brothers and sisters. Wallahu fi awn al abd. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but I know about myself. From the moment I get up from my bed till the moment I lay down again at the, in the evening and throughout the night, I need Allah's help. My joints, if they don't function properly, I will not be able to get out of the bed. Right? If water is not flowing in the house, I will not be able to make wudu. If food is not in the refrigerator from the night before, I will not have something to eat. Everything that I do and say and experience throughout my day, I need Allah's help. Right? And who among us could ever have the audacity to say, no, I don't need Allah's help. If you think about the minute things, and I need that help constantly. And if you think about it, you're always like, oh, Ya Allah, I have this other issue going on. What about this? Oh, my daughter's wedding, my, my son's job, my wife's doctor's appointment. Oh, Allah, make the results come back properly. Uh, my, my A1C is high. Let, let, I'm going for my test and I'm thinking about it. I'm like, oh my God, is it gonna be high? Ya Allah, Ya Allah, help me out. Constantly, 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 every single day, we feel that. We feel that we need this, this help. 
كان الله في عون العبد so how do I get this help the answer is given here what is the answer can someone answer that online brothers and sisters I need this help yes yes very simple right very simple it, it doesn't take whatever you do whatever so what does that bring right what is the, i mean think about this causes humility this doesn't cause arrogance when i recognize the fact that i am in constant need every single moment of my life is in constant need of help it brings humility in my behavior right when i am giving and I am helping my brothers and sisters, I should in no way, shape, or form think that I am superior to them. As a matter of fact, I'll even share with you, uh, I was talking to one of uh, our brothers, and he said, you know, when even uh, sometimes we go in the field, sometimes, I mean, uh, I'm talking about helping hand here. He said, I sometimes even think about uh, I should be wearing normal clothes so I don't stand out in the crowd. And I actually thought about it. I'm like, subhanAllah, that's such a... I mean, he said, you have to even reflect upon... Uh, and not everybody does it, right? You may be properly clothed, you're probably dressed, but you, you're going to communities that are in ruins. They don't have... Forget it, water. He said, well, you think about your clothes as well. You won't overdress. And... You know, these are, these are, this is about your mental model and how we see the world around us. You know, there's a reason why people say what well, Prophet has said that the fuqara and masakin, the poor and, and just the fact that they have lived their life in this world for, you know, from the time they become uh, adults, you know, 40, 50, 60 years. But on the day of judgment, they will enter paradise 500 years before everyone else. Let that soak in. 500 years. So if somebody was in this world, you know, wealthy, alhamdulillah, but they may have to wait. Allah knows best. But these are, these are things that you have to think about, right? Um, so obviously lots of lots of good discussion here and, and things that we uh, can think about now another concept how much time we have oh I better go ahead. another concept what do you see in this slide what do you see so far you can see it right right in front of the slide Very obvious answer. Yes. Prosperity, right? Prosperity. And who doesn't want it? Prosperity when it comes to everything, right? What is the sunnah of Allah? How do you get prosperity? Who, who wants it? Everybody raise their hand, right? Everybody would raise their hand. Prosperity. I want it. I want when it comes to personal freedom, social capital, economy, I mean, you name it. We all want that. Okay, so let's look at the ayah. Okay. Towards the end, the red portion. فَأَمَّا الزَّبَدُ فَيَذْهَبُ جُفَاءً وَأَمَّا مَا يَنْفَعُ النَّاسَ فَيَمْكُثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَذَلِكَ يَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالِ and I put the translation there as well. What do you uh, think is going on here? If you read that red portion in the translation, what do you think is going on?
Anyone on the online team, brothers and sisters, anyone wants to give their opinion? I will stress upon it. So the sunnah of Allah is he's created this system by which this world is working and functioning. Anyone who has the understanding of the sunnah is the smartest human being on the face of the earth. Because he knows. If I want to be prosperous, I want to be thriving, I want to have resources, I want to be happy. The secret to that is helping and benefiting mankind. If I am setting up, if I am the king, I am the president, I am the in charge or the whoever, and I know this rule, then if you look at historically, historically, if you look at the, um, uh, the history of mankind, you study the rise and fall of civilizations, you will recognize this very basic principle. And it has repeated itself throughout the history of mankind. Look at the history of Muslims. Whatever benefits mankind stays on the earth. Maulana Maududi uh, wrote this very famous book called, uh, it's an Urdu, it's been, I think it's translated, it's a small booklet, it's called Banao, Banao or Bigar. And I love that book, uh, which basically means, uh, you know, to develop and to destroy, right? And he writes, writes in it in a very beautiful manner. He says, the example of, a, of human beings is as, uh, uh, as a lawn, uh, someone who's taking care of the lawn. So there is an owner of the lawn and he appoints this person as the lawn, lawn care taker person. And as long as the person, we call it in Urdu, Mali, right? And as long as the person uh, is the, is the what is the right word in, in English? Lawn care, Mali? A gardener, thank you. I appreciate that. The gardener, as long as the gardener takes care of the garden, no issues. The owner will say, you can continue next month. I'll continue to pay you. You continue to uh, be paid. And you just take care of the lawn. Now, if the gardener stops doing their work, what happens? He's kicked out. He's kicked out. Thank you very much. We don't need you. If the gardener continues to do the work and he dies and his son, who was living with him, he says, well, my father was a gardener, was the gardener. He took care of this for 20 years and 30 years. And now I should be paid. The condition is what? Take care of the lawn. Take care of the lawn. If you take care of the lawn, you, you're allowed. You can stay. If not, I'm going to hire someone else. This is the example of human beings on this earth. Allah, the owner of this garden, has appointed human beings to take care of this lawn. If you take care of the lawn, you will have prosperity. You will have rule, you will have control, you will have resources at your disposal. The day you stop taking care of the lawn, you're done. I cannot come in the Ummah and say, well, my parents were my this nation or that. We see this in the history of mankind. Whatever benefits mankind, it will continue to thrive and be prosper and be. This is a very simple rule, and uh, uh, and that's the secret to prosperity. And I just want to uh, briefly talk about uh, this concept of rise and fall of nations. Ibn Khaldun, if you ever, he's one of the most uh, uh, talked about and referenced uh, historian, right? and he writes uh, in his Al Muqaddama, his very famous book that he's written. And in that book, he writes uh, 
some very interesting analogies. He says, the rise and fall of nations, nations when they become, uh, he said the stages of nations are similar to the stages of a human life. What happens the very first thing? You are born. You are born. And nations are born. What happens in the early stages of life? You are a child. You have so much energy. And nations, when a new nation is born, look at, think about, think about the, the time of Prophet ﷺ and the Khilafah, right? There was so much energy. And uh, the government and the state would take care of, and the government and the state and the people are on the same page. They are working with each other. They are supporting each other. And the time goes by. And then you become an adult and you do big things. And you are, in, uh, you are a, a young person full of energy. Then what happens? You become in that middle ages where now the governments are starting to wear off and they're thinking of, uh, well, they're, they're more, they just want ease for themselves. They want comfort for themselves. And there is the synergy between uh, the, uh, the government and, and the people starts to wear off. Now the people want something and the government wants something. They want more comfort. They want more ease. They want more, uh, you know, lavish lifestyles. And that's where, the, 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 the process begins and you age and you age and that that process continues to uh, this continue to separate you continue to become different and uh, become further further apart until the point where that nation dies because the goal of the government becomes different than its people and the people they are supposed to serve and same timeline happens with a human being human being goes through the same process. So he he had a, this very beautiful comparison between uh, the rise and fall of nations and the history of nations and the life of a human being. So it's very interesting if you ever get a chance to read it. All right. Uh, here's another uh, hadith that I want to really reference uh, quickly here, inshallah. And I want to... Uh, stress upon, the Prophet ﷺ was asked by one time, but who is the most beloved of people? And he could have said, the one who has the most prayers, the one who fasts, the one who gives sadaqah. You would think so, right? I mean, I mean that's, we, we talk about, but what was his answer? He says, anfa'ahum linnas. And this is the theme that kind of repeats itself in the history of uh, Islam and the teachings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Fa'ahum Linnas, the one who is the most I'll read the uh, I'll put the translation here, the one who is most uh, useful to people you know we see in our community sometimes there are very few people um, people understand in the community like if you have an issue go to this person and we should look at ways in how can we be among one of those people. And then he asked, what are the most beloved acts? Again, he would not say uh, it's the, the, the hajjud prayer. right? He would not say uh, giving secret uh, sadaqah. He would not say it was hajj. None of those actions. What did he say? The most beloved acts to Allah. And I'll, I think uh, those of you who were there yesterday, somebody mentioned the, uh, the story of Umar. One time he was passing by at night and he, uh, he, uh, heard uh, he was passing by a household and he heard some ch children crying and he went into this into the house he knocked on the door went to the house asked saw a woman and she had multiple children and she had a pot that was she was trying to cook something on and he said why are the children crying 
And uh, she said, well, they are very hungry. They need food, but I don't have the food. He said, he said what about this, this, this pot? He, she said, well, this is just water boiling in it. And I want them to feel like hopefully they can go to sleep. And uh, Umar radiallahu anhu runs out of the house, goes out to the uh, Bayt al-Mal, and he brings lots of food. And his servant was with him. And his servant said, Ya Amir al muminin allow me to take this, this, uh, this load. He said, no, it's not your responsibility. It's my responsibility. He rushes back. He goes into the house. Instead of putting the food and giving it to the woman, it would have been enough. If you think about it, it would have been enough. He said, no, I'm going to. He got into the house. He cooked the food himself. And he himself fed the children. And then he stepped out of the house and waited. His, his servants like, yeah, Amir al muminin let's go. For, okay, you got the food. You, you cooked the food. You didn't have to do all this. Now you have already fed the children. What are we waiting for? He said, just wait. And a few minutes later, the children were full. They started to run around. They were giggling. They were happy. They were playing around with each other. 15, 20 minutes later, he said, let's go. So his, his, his servant asked him, he said, yeah, I mean, what's, what's the point? Why, why did we wait for that long? He said, when I came to the house, I, I heard them cry. I wanted to make sure that when I leave, that they are happy. Sururun tudkhiluhu ala qalbi muslim, ala muslim. Surur, happiness that you enter into the, into, and I'll tell you, and we experience this a lot of times. I mean, I know with Helping Hands work, we go to a lot of different places. Um, and our teams, I've, I've noticed that a lot of times, they, they play with the children. And initially, I didn't understand it until I, I saw it my, myself. And these children become, they would, they're happy, they're giggling, they're, they're running around, they're jumping on you, you're playing ball with them. They're happy. And Initially, it didn't hit me, but it, it, uh, afterward, I was able to think about it, like, sururun tudkhiluhu ala, ala muslim. And then uh, uh, the rest of the hadith, obviously, uh, we know about if you provide for their, for their food and this, this. And, wala, and the last one is very important, too. Wala an amshi ma'a akhin li fi hajatin ahabbu ilayya min an a'takifa fi hadha al-masjid, yani masjid al-madinati shahran. Very profound, very profound. And this happened later on in the Sunnah, uh, in the, in the, uh, the time of uh, the Khulafa. And one of the Sahabis, he was doing a tikaf in the masjid. And somebody came to him for, for some need. And he left, he left the masjid. And people stopped him and said, where are you going? You're you are supposed to be in a tikaf. You cannot leave. You're, you should be in the masjid. He said, he repeated this hadith. He said, I've heard sahibu had al-bayt meaning the Prophet ﷺ, I've heard him say this, that it's better for me to help take care of the need of my brother than to be doing etikaf in this masjid for an entire month. So brothers and sisters, I mean, really when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, helping people and the emotions and uh, the, the, the usefulness so I'm going to pause here for a second. Let me see if, uh, if there are anyone who wants to. How much time we have? We have almost uh, 10, 15 minutes? Uh, yeah, we can do 10 minutes. 10 minutes, inshallah. We'll try to find it. Yes, inshallah. Yeah. yeah, I just want to come up in my mind when you mentioned uh, our team has been played games for soccer with the people. It is uh, very important. Uh, it is very impactful for a child and, uh, and that person will remember about their lives. Yeah. But whatever we do, people, we give the plan, we give the needs, whatever we give. And uh, how the people, we make the people feeling, how we make them feel, they remember. That's why we have to make sure whatever we do, the group, uh, we should make them feel like we are. Absolutely. Supporting them or helping them, and that's the key part. Instead of just hey, this is for you and go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Otherwise, point is something very, very profound, right? Very important. 
You see, it's it's not the thing. We are not doing an, uh, like a you know a man in Arabic, a hasan in Urdu, for example. We're not doing that. We we are. That's why the dignity and the feeling and the situation of the receiver is very important. I remember vividly one time uh, uh, I was in Jordan and. They do this, uh, what we call them, uh, the malls of humanity. Basically, what they bring all the items that we take and they will set them up in a shop format. Uh, and then before beforehand, they would give coupons to the community. Um, so we are not distributing items to people, but we set it up into like a like a shop, like a like a mall area. Uh, people would come and they would purchase whatever they need. Oh, when I say purchase, they will take whatever they need and they will pay with the coupon. Like I have five family members, I have seven family members, and I have that many coupons. And they can they can take whatever from appropriately. I was watching one time, I was standing at the door, and I saw this old lady. And I vividly remember she would reach out to like a, it was a coat, like a jacket, like a winter jacket. She would reach out to a jacket. And then she'd pull her hand back. I saw her do it three times. And I sort of kind of moved uh, on the other side so she cannot see me. And she felt like maybe people are watching her or, or someone. So I felt on the other side. And on the other side, I could see the tears in her eyes. I saw her crying. And she would pick, and then eventually she picked up the jacket and went to the to the to the checkout line. So People who are going through this, we don't know. I talked to one guy. Uh, he was in Mafraq in, in Jordan. Uh, he was like in a tent. I was talking to him. He said, he said one month ago, and he was in a tent on, uh, literally on, on, they had some, some uh, very, very uh, uh, not, uh, thin mattresses. It was like a very basic tent. Uh, he said, one month ago in Damascus, I had four Ferraris at my door. And today I have nothing. It could be me tomorrow. It could be any one of us tomorrow. So the dignity of those people and the etiquette of how we deal in this situation is extremely important. The feeling and uh, the dignity of that community and how you, you, you can make them feel comfortable, happy, dignified, is extremely, extremely, extremely important. <clears throat> um, and this is another hadith of Prophet He says, إِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ عَلَى الْمَرِيضِ فَنَفِّسُوا لَهُ فِي الْأَجْرِ When you enter uh, on a sick person, um, <laughs> give him hope for a long life. Because the qadr will not change. Whatever is going to happen, happen. But just mere words from you, mashallah, brother, you look good, mashallah. I mean, I think, I think last time I saw you, now, mashallah, there's a very big change in you. I, I see how, um, you know, last few days, you've really improved quite a bit. The, the color of your skin is better. You know, your eyes, I can see better. What is that going to take? What is that going to really take? You are you are changing the situation for that person. His, you know, a lot of times, and, and I'm sure a lot of you would, uh, would testify to this, you've gone to a doctor and you're feeling sick and somebody told you along the way, oh, wait a second, it could be this, it could be that, they're talking about diseases, they are, you, know, you know, is it cancer, is it this, is it? I mean, you, and you're worried. You, you enter the doctor and I've had this multiple times happen with me and the doctor uh, said, oh, you're fine. Nothing. Go home. Take some Tylenol. By the time I get out of the office, I'm feeling 70, 80% better. My, my disease is gone, right? Happened with a lot of people. Just mere words can change the outlook. And, and you know, yeah, did, did his medical record change? No, nothing has changed. Just that feeling. فَنَفِّسُوا لَهُ فِي الْأَجَلْ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَا يَرُدُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ يُطِيبُ بِنَفْسِ الْمَرِيدِ And it's going to make the heart of the one who is sick, he will, he will feel cheerful. Right? Uh, so, uh, 
again, I mean, the same discussion here. Anyone wants to, uh, and before I go to that one story, but uh, anyone wants to add here when it comes to any experiences that you've had with respect to uh, really cheering somebody? Yes, please. about uh, somebody who is reflecting on Surah Yusuf and that um, that material was given to Surah Salah and She's just, you know, in a happy mood, right? And you maybe even just come in here and say, hey, hey, you know, the other day, you the, the, the tea you made, it was amazing, amazing, right? And she'll make you better tea, and your evening will be great, right? So, so think about those things. Uh, so many, uh, again, we, we have lots of ways here. Uh, so there's so many ways in which you can help. If you're a healthy person, 
And now, as I guess we, with our current situation around the world, all of these areas of are really important. Right? If you think about it, uh, basically in person, I can go and myself with, you know, by my hand, I can help people out. Uh, I can help people with my wealth, by creating. I can help people with my tongue, by my dua. And I want to remind myself and every one of us, inshallah, that as we go through the current challenges, I think this is my last second last slide. Uh, as we go through these challenges uh, with our community and with what we're seeing in, in Palestine and the rest of the world, in every in, in every salah, in every prayer, please, in one of your rukur or sujood or qiyam, during the salah, make dua all brothers and sisters. Because this is their right on us. Uh, through our actions, advocacy. And alhamdulillah, it's, it's really good to see people are standing up, the communities are standing up, our youth is standing up. And I think, I would say, one of the major, major changes we are seeing this, this time around, our youth, our MSAs and YM, and our youth around the country, I'm speaking of, uh, through our connections, Educate people. Educate people. And this is a perfect time to educate people about what happened. The 80 years of history of Palestine. No one knows that. Seems like everything started on October 7th. Looks like the world started on October 7th. Um, and with our vision. Right now, and again, bringing hope to the community, bringing hope to people and communities and what's happening around them and trying to give them solace and comfort. That's help. That's understanding their dilemma, their difficulty, but consoling them and really giving them solace and giving them comfort that Allah inna nasrallahi qareeb. Allah inna nasrallahi qareeb. The help of Allah is near. And then with our wisdom, and guiding them. I think this is this is the role the community must play. The elders, the scholars, the teachers, the imams, the community leaders must play that role into guiding our youth, standing up next to next to them, guiding them because they bring the experience and the resources, and the youth brings the energy and the passion. So these are things that we can all, alhamdulillah, can inshallah. Uh, and I want to open it up, inshallah, as we as we conclude. I think this was my last slide. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we already talked about this one. So I'm I'm going to try to inshallah conclude here, and but I want to kind of finally open up uh, the floor and say, anyone wants to add, when, what are some of the other ways we can help? Any comments, thoughts, uh, you know, things that you want to share? What can we do? Yes. This might fall under wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, or actions like like knowledge, like if you have a particular like a art skills or career skills that assist with it, you like build a website or social media. Yeah. 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 And and this is this is the beauty of this uh, this concept because the diversity of our community, our our youth, they are good at social media. They are good at there's so many skills they bring in. And when they, uh, when they are able to really translate these into actions and how that can really help the entire community. Because I'll tell you, this is unprecedented time. And what we can do in this time and in others, I mean, obviously it's not limited to this time. This is a, this is a lifelong, uh, lifelong uh, uh, practice that we must continue to have engaged into. But really, because here's the key factor. It doesn't really matter what the results are. And I'll uh, end with this, inshallah. I recently heard this quote and I really thought it was very important. You know, there can be victory. A victory in a war is actually a loss. A victory in a war is actually a loss if your faith has lost. If you lost your faith, then that victory is actually a loss. And a loss 
in a battlefield or uh, whatever that may be, if there's a real war going on and you lost the war, but you saved your faith, then that's actually a victory. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to really uh, give us the ability to be that, to be part of those who are able to help in a real way, in a very sensitive way, in a sincere way, and to accept it from all of us. Um, sorry about the initial technical issues, and uh, uh, but inshallah, I'll stop here. Sheikh uh, Baida, what's the timeline? I think, I mean, if there are any questions, I can more than. Inshallah, inshallah, we'll conclude. Yes, sister. Um, this one from uh, this one from time, great Muhammad and Alayhi Muhammad. And given this blockade, um, do you have a ready at the drop of border? Yes. Yes. Yeah, great question, inshallah. Let me just stop this, uh, or do you want sure, to stop. stop it here? Um, and uh, You can speak, continue. Okay, sure. So I'll, I'll repeat here the question the sister is asking about helping hand and if helping hand is able to uh, actually physically right now help. Um, and also do we have, what is the, our preparation in, in case of the Rifah border? So uh, just to give you an idea, right now we are working with uh, two vetted partners who are inside Gaza and who have, one of them actually has about more than 5,000 employees inside Gaza. And uh, we and they have supplies, food, medicine, lots of those supplies. So we're working with them to distribute those supplies. That's, that's ongoing right now. In the meantime, we also have uh, many, many uh, truckloads of supplies that are being prepared. And you may have seen the videos. Um, uh, if you're interested, we can sort of share with you. But uh, they are being prepared in Amman, Jordan. And the plan is to airlift them. So we've talked to the Jordanian government and they said uh, the Jordanian army. So they are, inshallah, are going to allow us uh, a C-130 load of supplies to be transported into Arish. Arish is the uh, nearest uh, airport to the Rafah border. And we're just working through the Jordanian government authorities situation. And once, inshallah, we're, we're there, we're hoping to be able to go inside. Again, everything is you know subject to change. Uh, but that's the plan. Uh, we are also working uh, with Egyptian partners who uh, are trying to get into uh, through the Rafah border. And uh, we are, inshallah, making dua. Uh, but stuff is ready. It just... Uh, but at least on the other side, uh, there's a lot of actually food and supply that they are able to distribute right now as we are speaking. Uh, even, even during the blockade, blockade, they have been able to do that. So, uh, but obviously it's not going to last forever. They're going to have to be uh, replenished from, from the inside, from the outside. So we make dua, inshallah. Yes. I'm going to give in Pakistan for one million or two million from A and five million from Fifteen million. Fifteen million. That is also yeah. Idea. Yeah. I mean, again. Mobilization. Yeah. We we are different different strategy for different for different problems, right? So we are kind of basically we have not. Um, our goal is to help people, right? Our goal is not. Uh, to mobilize. There's no really. There's no reason to mobilize the community. The community is already mobilized. Just you know. So we are only focused right now, and we don't want to because again, money is not going to be an issue. Money is not an issue at this time, and it's just how can we get stuff inside Gaza? 
obviously the, the biggest issue is uh, we already know that the I mean we wanted the ceasefire is temporary right now. I hope it's going to hold. Uh, but again, I mean we heard the the news about uh, I think it was Karanba was mentioning it today uh, about uh, the West Bank. There was there was strikes there, and uh, so and then you have the biggest issue, which is uh, the occupation itself. So really, our strategy is different this time around. It's not similar to Pakistan. Um, the issue is not resources. The issue is getting them into the country. Right? But right now, the people of the community is in high mode. Yes, yes. And then we can use them long term. Yes, that, that's the, that's, that's we are we are doing. Alhamdulillah, people are, I mean, how, this is, I have to say this about the Muslim community in North America. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from them. They have been extremely generous. Extremely generous. And I'm honestly, honestly, I'm telling you, I'm truly proud to be part of this community. They have been so generous. I mean, time and again, people have come around and donated, uh, subhanAllah. So, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring ease to, to our brothers and sisters. There's a follow-up. You said that um, there's a that you're working with that was already there? Yes. Before? Yes. We have been in Gaza since 2013. So we have been working and we have uh, you know, supported multiple projects over the years. Um, we don't have our own staff inside Gaza right now, but we are working through the, the, those partners. So they have they have supplies inside right now. That's not the twenty twelve. No, 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 no. That's this is just the new one. That, yeah, this, they have already had stuff inside us. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, knowing the situation, I mean, I'm sure I mean, the community has this been going on for at least 17, 18 years here in Gaza. So the community has learned how to deal with these blockades in in some ways. Um, they're they're able to somehow. I mean, when you, if you have to sustain this kind of a situation, then you have nowhere to go, and you have to figure out some some mechanisms, right? So they're able to do some of that. Um, but again, it's not long term. Um, I mean, I, uh, Subhanallah, I I have to say, and I was mentioning it yesterday during the event. Uh, you know, the ayah of Quran, "Aladina qala lahum nasu, inna nasa qad jamau lakum fakhshohum." You know. Uh, when people have, when people came around and said, "This is this was revealed at the time of uh, Ghazwat al Khandaq, right?" And we remember the situation. It was a month-long blockade with just a thin, three-mile-long, uh, you know, trench around the city. And the Prophet Sallam and the Sahaba. I mean, no food. There was no electricity at the time, but you know, no supplies, no external help, and. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the situation in the Quran. It says, Aladina qala lahum nas. When those people who, when people told them, Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum fakhshawhum. That everyone has came around and has gathered to, to wipe you out. So fear them. And what was the response of people? Fazadahum imana. The community, and this is what we're seeing, brothers and sisters. فَزَادَهُمْ إِمَانَ وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنُ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ And their response was, and this is, Allah would, could have sent angels, Allah could have changed the situation on, uh, uh, in, in the first five, four, five days, but he tested people. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi himself would put, you know, people were showing him two stones, he was showing them three stones on his belly. Right? And then, Right? People started, they were shaken. And until the point people said, uh, when is the help of Allah? Allah inna Allah Inshallah, Allah's help is near. Zakum Allah khair. Barakallah fikum. Barakallah fikum, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته